Hello, my name is Jacob Lisko, and I'm an assistant football coach at Harrison High School. I've been there for five years now, from 2016 till this past year. Before that, I was at Greenland High School from 2012 to 2016. So my nine years, I've uh, learned what works and what doesn't work in the secondary world, and I've been asked to put together a skills and drills tape for you. So I'm going to take you through my progressions from simple backpedal footwork all the way into drill implementation into our route reading and diagnosing concepts. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to take you through is what I call a four cone trill. We're just going to work on our backpedaling, braking on our outside foot, sticking our inside foot, and coming directly downhill on a zero degree break back towards me as a coach. Both of these two will race. The guys that line up right behind them will put their toes on the white line. I like to put lead foot on the far side and back foot on the near side of the white lines. That way you're offset about half a step and they take off as soon as the first guys finish. What we're looking for is that outside plant foot and that inside drive foot. Both of these fellows that do it first, do it correctly, finish downhill on their sides, right close to the cones. These next two get close on the footwork, a little sloppy on the angle downhill. Guy in the white shirt crossed over his feet. Anytime it takes you three steps to get around the corner, that's probably one step too many. So this is what we're looking for, a quick two-step plant on the outside foot, drive on the inside foot. All right, next drill, we're going to use the same four cones. These are spread out about a yard and a half a piece about four and a half yards total. We're gonna work on a plant foot and drive foot drill. This is simply to work on which foot hits the ground first and which foot needs to follow. Then we're going to regather our feet together on the inside of the cones and back pedal to the next one. You'll circle the third one completely and then break for a downhill 45 interception from a coach standing down here on the side. Throwing them that ball makes them come out of that last break a little faster and not think about their footwork. So hopefully we'll get a natural plant and start to build some habits. This is what it looks like. A little sloppy with people standing in the way. What we're looking for is pedal, stick on the inside, drive on the outside and regather. Okay. This guy in the blue shirt here does it pretty good. Here's the instructions. You're pedaling on the inside of the cones. Inside foot, which will be the guy in the blue shirt's right foot, will stick. He's going to put his left foot outside the cone. The right foot will follow on the bottom side to gather for the back pedal to the next one. Pedal, plant, pedal, plant, circling around the cones, pivoting the hips. Here, inside foot plant, we're looking good. Outside foot to drive, if he was going to continue that downward 45 angle, would look good. Gather, pedal. On his second cone, he did it incorrectly and is now crossed over his feet. Any kind of juke lateral move, he's toast. Third one, he plants his correct inside foot, followed with a drive, and then a coach rears back to throw the downhill 45 interception. You can tell his body language is more natural. I just want to get there. And his habit is putting his inside foot down for the break. So we've built a good habit there on this drill. For the next, we're going to take the same four cone drill and use it to work corners and a palms or shuffle technique. Uh, free safeties, this would be a motor to tiger technique. So what we're going to do is shuffle up to the cone ahead of us and sprint down to the cone below us. So right here to start, it's going to go up one, down one. Then you're going to shuffle up two, down one from then on out. Up two, down one, up two, and get out for the downhill 45 degree of the break. Shuffling up, squaring back down. The important part of this drill is the corner's top hip has come back down square and is in a proper tackling position for the ball carrier inside. His eyes are looking for the ball carrier. His near hip and lead foot is leading the way into that. We're going to shuffle up for our reads, sprint down for coverage, shuffle up, sprint down, and then finish with an interception. Next group gets it a little tighter. Watch this guy in the blue. Shuffling up, 
and finished all the way back square with his inside foot up ready to tackle. The ball carrier would be inside of him where I'm standing, and he's got his lead foot up, lead pec, lead shoulder, inside shoulder ready to go. Shuffle up, sprint down, shuffle up, and get out at the end. Next guy does it pretty sharp, shuffle up, close it down. Shuffle up, close it down, and get out. Corners, that's really good work in cover two. Mix it coverage. Here, we got a simple leverage drill for both D-backs. I'll use this all summer in August and a little bit in September. Once we get past September, um, we move on to more complicated things during the weeks. This, once I get comfortable learning where they need to be in relative to the receiver, um, you can progress past this drill. For free safeties, what they're gonna do is back pedal on the vertical and pedal weave on the outbreaking routes, maintaining their inside and above leverage. I normally go for about 25 yards at a 45 degree angle, give the receivers about three to four steps before they cut. So three straight, three out, three straight, three out. Free safety is gonna pedal, weave, pedal, weave, staying close to his receiver, just getting his hips loose and kind of baiting him into the interception, but maintaining a close enough distance where we can break on the ball. The next group, I've got a corner in the wide receiver. The corner is going to be outside leverage for palms or cover two. He's eyes on the hip. He's shuffling up for vertical and pedaling out for outbreaks. Eye discipline's really good here. Maintaining leverage where I can wall him as the number one receiver inside as I break on the number two receiver outside. The next safety's doing it right. Just a little late on his breaks. Corner did pretty good. We got a corner here to finish it. Not doing too bad, getting a little tight, a little behind. I would run this drill back this way. Make sure both your receiver and D-back get to flip-flop and do it twice both directions. Next, this is one of my favorite things to do, tackle drill. Um, we teach it compression style. That way, a free safety in a corner together or two punt team players together or two special team players a corner and the sidelines or a safety and a linebacker. Everybody's going to have a compression somewhere if you're gap fitting correctly. So this drill teaches you how to trust your teammate or the sidelines and use leverage on your hip. How we rotate in this drill is two punt defenders on the hashes. The hashes are technically out of bounds. The punt returner is going to catch it and do everything he can to get the ball, bring the ball back to me so we can return and we start the next drill. This defender will rotate and become the punt returner. The punt returner will go to defender and defender this way. That way you get a quick rotation, lots of reps. I'm going to throw a high arcing punt. We want the ball to get there about the defenders five yards away. That way it gives them time to break down, get their inside foot up because they're leading with their inside peck and inside shoulder, targeting their near hip. Both of their feet are correct. And we finish the drill when both defenders are wrapped up on the ball carrier. We do this in shells, shoulder pads only. We do this in full pads. And as the drill shows, you can do this in helmets only to simply work on your footwork and the distance of where I need to be before I break down. We slowed it down a lot for this because we didn't have any gear on just for clinic film. As soon as they make a tackle, they need to rotate and get out of the way. Again, the ball's just a hair late, but we got two defenders broke down. What we're looking for in a perfect uh, clip of this drill is two halves of the defenders in the frame of the ball carrier. So if that ball carrier wanted to run straight, he's going to get a left and a right shoulder from both defender. He can't bounce it either direction because they have leverage on him. Inside foot's up, and we finish with both guys tapping off. Rotate, next man. Ball gets there. We need two guys broke down. They're looking pretty good. Good frame, good halves, good leverage. The more juking and running sideways you can add into it, the better. I want the guy, I want the defenders broke down as possible. The guy on the left has inside foot up looking good. Our defender on the right had his outside foot up. And doing this, he's cut his hips off and gets outrun to the outside and gives up the score. We're going to work compression tackle for another angle. In this set, we're working a two versus two corner and free safety versus two receiver set. We're going to run it as a pop pass. The number two receiver has given us an out read. The corner has a right now break because the number one receiver ran a hitch. So he's going to come make the tackle right now. 
the free safety has to open his hips and check number two on the pop and go or number two on the wheel before he can commit to the run. We're using our imagination here. He's blocked the corner, so the free safety is going to arrive on the tackle drill just a hair late. Just like the compression punt return drill earlier, the ball carrier has anywhere from sideline to hash to get through it. I want this to be as open field as possible with leverage. If you'll notice, the corner at the top uses our four cone drill from earlier to shuffle up and square back down with your top hip. His inside foot's up, looking good. Free safety has an alley to come fill. Unfortunately, he fills it with the wrong foot up, allowing a possible juke inside lane. So we rotate. Next one, the corner is a little late, getting his outside foot forward. He gives up the inside run lane. Safety's a hair late, and that could turn into positive yardage. The safety does use the correct arm and peg. Here, the corner uses a four cone drill to shuffle up and sprint down. Has the top hip back square to the line of scrimmage, is using the correct foot, and makes a good form tackle. The safety, unfortunately, uses the inside instead of the outside shoulder. But that's why we do it in drill so we can fix it because when it happens on Friday night, it's too late. Same form. we got a corner and a free safety on compression tackle here, except we're going to run outside zone to the nub side. I've got – normally I'd put a player or a coach here for the tight end. He would either block down or block out. Our corner is going to read that for a run fill. He's going to fill the butt side of the last blocker. But this drill, we're just going simple running back read. The running back or ball carrier, only thing I need him to do is get to the outside the tackle. Once he's outside the tackle, he has an option to cut it vertical, bounce it, or push the sidelines. The corner is the one that's going to make him choose. He needs to be the rock in which the water divides. Where are you going to send the running back? To your help with 10 other defenders inside, or are you going to let him bounce? So we run outside zone, kind of a stretch play here. The D-backs pedaled. Top hip square to the line, looked good, but he stopped his feet. And because the corner stopped his feet, running back got free to the outside. On this one, corner shuffles up, gets his top hip square. It becomes a compression tackle with the safety. Looked pretty good. Corner's gonna shuffle, four cone drill implementation. Right there with leverage. What I'd like to see here is the D-back's outside hip come forward towards the line of scrimmage and sprint like he's running through a brick wall. This is a big hit opportunity, but instead he tries to match speed and run sideways. Ends up making the tackle anyway, probably a one-yard gain, but I'd like to see that downhill forcing a little better. If we were in pads, I think he'd have done it. On to the pass, partner pass breakup sets. I call these PP, PPBUs, partner pass breakups. We go each direction about four times to let the D-back work both directions and then flip-flop with your partner so your partner gets to run both directions. First thing we do is 90-degree breaks. I'm standing down here behind the screen. Your D-back's going to start in a trail man technique on the back hip. We're looking for a left-hand tackle, right-hand pass breakup. We're targeting the hands. Right here, the D-back gets just a little bit ahead of the receiver and is able to make the pick. We only use two hands for guaranteed interceptions. Every other time, we want to secure the tackle with the back hand. <clears throat> here, apparently, all of our D-backs are a little bit faster than receivers, and we get in front of them all for interceptions. But we want to secure that left hand on the hip to make sure we have a tackle just in case that ball makes it through somehow. We're coming from that left hand on back hip, showing them it's possible to still bring your left hand forward to get an interception. Run that four times, both directions twice. Everybody gets an opportunity. Now with the same partner, we're running uh, backward 45 degrees. Um, this would represent a post, a corner defending it in a deep cover three look where he has to come over top the post. Defenders on the outside in the dark blue shirt, does a good job of targeting the hands, comes over the top. What we're looking for here is, again, a left-hand tackle wrapping the hips 
and a right hand swat down to the ground for partner pass breakup. The guy in the white is the defender, is able to cut him off and use two hands. Not bad. Guy in the white shirt's the defender, high throw. Here's what we don't want to see. The defender's on the top, and he gets posted out. When you can, can't see the defender behind the wide receiver, I have the ability to throw the ball in front, right at him, or slightly behind. The defender wants to either be completely on top for over-the-top breakup, or he wants to come underneath, but can't get caught directly behind like this. I like playing over the top to deep routes. That way we force the quarterback to throw a line, and our safety has a chance to make a play. If you play underneath, Break up on this type of deeper route, you're chasing and allow the quarterback to float the ball as deep as he can and let the wide receiver run underneath it. So we're looking to cut the field off for deeper routes. This D-back cuts through his hands, does a good job, two hands interception. Again, partner pass breakups, doing the same thing coming downhill for downward 45s. This is going to represent a comeback route or a search that sat it down on underneath coverage. We're underneath pass breakup here. So again, this would be left hand tackle, right hand breakup. He secures the tackle with the left. If he were to catch that ball, the le his left, the defender's left hand can wrap up the legs, but his right hand targets the ball and swats it away at the end. Very nice job. Left hand tackle, right hand swat. As a coach, I'm really trying to Thread this in there at the fingertip distance, make them reach out for it and make that D-back lunge, get that last step acceleration to break on the ball. These are partner pass breakup 180s. Simple fade route from the wide receiver. It's a 180 break because he's going the opposite direction which way he's facing, the D-back is. We want to see three power steps, a crossover, and a high point. This D-back is going to do most of it right. He starts just a little bit standing up in a lazy stance. We want to be down, ready, get low. I want the eyes at the belly button level, it's definitely under their chest plate. We're looking for power steps, at least three of them, and a shuffle sideways technique to cut the wide receiver off. Once he shows us where he wants to release, inside or outside, we want to cut the field off so he no longer has the option to go back inside. So as soon as this wide receiver steps out, we're power stepping in, cutting him off. We want to touch his inside hip with our inside hand. So that's going to be the D-back's right hand. We're going to step over the fence with our left hip, then right hip. We'll show you over the fence technique here in just a little bit. I'm gonna, my eyes are going to target his hip. Once my, hit, once my hand touches it, then my eyes go to his eyes. We're going to target the hands, then the flight of the ball. Not enough power steps, but the hand on the hip was very good. Eye discipline, not too bad here. We got power steps here to make sure it's a fade. Hand on the hips, looking good. Eye discipline, eye to eye, looks good. The only deal is when the D-back looks flat, he misses the ball at the high point. Now that he catches up to where the ball is on top of his head, he jumps late. I like looking up and then flat to the quarterback instead of looking around and chasing the ball up. But he does a real good job here targeting the hands, makes it a contested catch. It's a great catch. D-back, so he's physical here, but his hands up in the shoulder pads and that kind of stuff gets called. We want to keep our hands down on the inside hip. <clears throat> so this is a little bit more bump and run than the 180 partner pass breakups. We want to get down here. Anytime we're running a, high, a single high man free or a two man free, I want the underneath coverage to be bumping and running with them, forcing that ball to be over the top where the safeties can get to it. So this drill is a simple man pick interception where we're working on the bumping and running, leveraging the inside hip, and then breaking on a downhill 45 interception. The wide receiver has the option to go inside towards the coach or outside towards the sidelines. Completely his option. The D-back doesn't need to know, and that's game-like. That's what we want to see. He's gonna, all, he, all the receiver has to do is, do is touch the five-yard line in front of it. As soon as he touches that line, it's his option to break. He breaks out. D-back gets a hand on it, but we just did partner pass breakups. Unfortunately, the D-back uses his left hand, whereas the wide receiver were to catch this, that's a touchdown. He's going to turn to the outside and outrun everybody. We want to use our right hand 
to make sure we have a second down play instead of a touchdown. Next two guys up, the D-back is on the inside hip. Good mesh, good knock away, good target the hands. Pedal, power steps. Again, we got the D-back using the left hand, which is the hand he should be tackling with. If the rod receiver catches this, which he does, it's a foot race to the end zone. Good physicality, but the problem with the D-back here is he's too tall. He's up in the receiver's shoulder pads, and the receiver gets under him and creates separation on the break. We want to sit down underneath his pads and target the hands on the ball. First group's going again, chooses to go the other direction. This D-back does a real great job of staying on the inside hip. I'd like to see more power steps before we open our hips like this. If I'm the wide receiver, I can cross those hips over. I want to stay a little more square before I turn and open my hips. Correct hand on the ball. Pedaling, walling, matching, targeting hands. It's a simple five yard drill, lots of reps. And it's the footwork that happens at the top of the route that I don't need the guys sprinting 20 yards down the field on a comeback to work the comeback footsteps. So anytime you're going to face a lot of hitches, a lot of comeback routes on the sidelines, sit downs, I use that drill to work on sitting our hips down. This is a simple center field turn interception drill. Backside safety or corner has a pedal for the read. We opened our hips to the multiple receiver side. We think that's the side. They all shut it down. Backside post. That's the kind of mentality we're looking for on this drill. We always finish with a high point. I want a quick, powerful pedal for five yards. Fly the hips open over the fence. Flip the hip. Get your head around first. Let the hips follow. Center field and high point to end it. Taking that ball away from any wide receiver. Not bad. Recover drill. This may be one of the most important ones you ever do. I don't want to practice this drill every week. I don't want to have to use it every Friday night. But if you expect your guys to recover on Friday, you got to teach it to them. So we're going to backpedal for a read, plant the outside foot and drive like we saw a run play or a hitch. Turned out to be a hitch and go. Turned out to be play action. So we stuck our foot in the ground, center field turn and burn. Always end with a high point. Pedal. It's a run play, play action, go play catch up. If you want your athletes to be able to do this, throw it in there early summer, early August. This is not an all year type drill because hopefully your coverages and your reads are a little better and you shouldn't have to do this all year. We might have to recover in August, but hopefully not in October. I don't know why that slide keeps throwing it in there. I promise I didn't put it in there multiple times. Here's one of my favorite interception drills. We're going to use this motor technique for a tiger side or sky free safety who's got the curl to flats. We're going to use our imagination that the number three receiver down here at the bottom has run a bubble. The number two receiver has run a vertical. I'm going to make it a corner route. And the number one receiver has curled it up, trying to run something like a scat concept. You're going to see the D-back's eyes. When we get a bubble, we're going to shoot or drive down to five yards. From there, we're going to motor sideways, checking the number two receiver to hook it up. He did not. He pressed vertical. So we walled him outside to the corner and found number one on the curl. Hopefully, the D-back's eyes will get outside and back in for the interception. I'm progressing three on the bubble, two on a go, one on a curl. So we check, is it three? Nope. Is it two? Nope. It's number one on the interception. For a D-back to sprint and then come to balance in the new zone is very important. The way we run our defenses, we're moving um, like a unit tied together. So when that receiver tells us where we need to be, we got to get to that new spot right now and then find who the new receiver is going to be in kind of a matchup man technique. Speed of the eyes, not too quick there. Almost caught him in the forehead. That dang slide. All right, so this is what I use every pregame Friday night. I call it the pregame pedal train. We're going to break them up into two groups. I got a free safety group at the top and a corner group at the bottom. This is a five-yard circular drill. So we normally start on the goal line, the five, and the 10, the 15, and run it simultaneously. 
First thing you have to teach is a straight pedal. I want one foot on each side of the white line and you're gonna pedal to the hash. Once they get to the hash, stand up, catch your breath, gather yourself. When you get to the other line coming back, sit your butt down, hands in front of your chest, and you're gonna pedal hard and with a purpose all the way to the sidelines. We do the straight pedal in summer and we do it in August. We normally get rid of it in September. They should be able to straight pedal by the time you're playing football games. <clears throat> Step two, and what I normally do and start with on Friday nights, is going to be this pedal weave. A wide receiver is going to stem you on the inside and outside. What we're going to do is weave our butts the direction the receiver is running so we don't have to commit and open our hips. We're going to read it for as long as we can, maintaining our inside or outside leverage until we can guarantee what route or concept it is. So we're going to imagine that there's cones all over that white line, and we're going to pedal weave until we get both feet on each side of the line. Like I said earlier, weave both feet on the side of the line. When you get to the hash, stand up, catch your breath, sit down in it on the way back. This allows for the coach to see every one of his players, his hips, their feet, their hands, how do they approach it. <clears throat> Now we're going over the fence. We're opening our hips to a deeper route, something like a post go. Chest is staying towards our man, but our hips have to open up to stay with the vertical. Okay. Looking for eye discipline. We want to keep the D-backs eyes towards the sidelines while their hips open up and face towards the hash. You want to open up the lead hip first. Make sure you throw an elbow with it as well to get momentum twisted and over the top. This is pregame, again, loosening the hips, just trying to get flexible. Then we move directly into our shuffle or motor technique. For corners, this is a palms technique and tiger for free safeties. Don't want to click the heels together. Don't want to touch your feet. We're on the balls of our feet, staying on your toes. This is more like a basketball defensive shuffle than anything else. And a lot of times you'll see guys stick their arms out for that. So after we get done shuffling, we move directly into an interception drill. We'll run a man technique towards the goal line and a zone technique towards the five. So they get both techniques in case we were to change coverages throughout the game. So the D-back's going to line up yard inside of the wide receiver. We use the five-yard line as the out of bounds. We're trying to wall them. With shuffle, with power steps, crossover, target the hip, and then high point for the interception. Just like that, with target the hip, flip our head, and high point to finish. Next D back should be up to ready to roll. He opened up his hips a little bit too early. Let's look at this guy again. Crossed his feet over right now. And doing that, the receiver has all the inside of the field he has leverage to. We want to power step and shuffle for just a little bit longer before we cross over. Run that both directions. Like I said, one side will be zone, one side will be man. And then once we get closer towards seven on seven in games, we use this three versus two tiger or sky drill. Three defenders, two receivers. Because there's only two, our tiger side free safety does not have to backpedal. He has two deep guys behind him in case both one and two were to go vertical. So what your tiger side free safety is doing here is looking for the shutdown. Who do I have as the corner is reading one to two, taking the deep guy? Backside free safety always has deep third is going to take number two or number one. We use the safeties as the number two receiver to rotate and use the corners as the number one receiver to rotate. Once the D-back diagnoses who they have, we're trying to get in that relatively comfortable leverage position that we used the drill earlier to get into. We're running cover three sky. Corner sees number one shut it down, so he gets to number two vertical. Backside safety is getting to number two vertical. He never had to progress. That was his original read. The tiger side free safety saw it was not number two that shut it down, so he found number one got underneath it for the interception. Well, partner pass breakup, I guess. 
Same thing here. Safety's using the motor technique to wall number two. Found out it was number two on the out route. Moves to intercept that as the backside three safety progresses all the way to the number one. <clears throat> These are general breaks and routes. Um, we'll use the scout book, what the other team is going to run on Friday night, to uh, get us better prepared for each team we face. But this is just the summer version of who is it and why. Again, free safety diagnosed number two. It wasn't him. He went vertical, so he walled him to the outside and found number one, shut it down. The corner bites a little bit hard on number one and gets behind number two on the vertical, but the backside free safety has the help over the top. The drill is good for all three positions. Change it up, who has the shutdown, and where you throw the football. Here we're going to finish with a two-verse-two two palms look. This is a cover two if we need it or a cover four if it has to be. We're both reading the number two receiver, and on his steps he breaks an outbreak, so the safety checks go, post, then curl. He sees the number one receiver shut it down, so he drives to the curl. The corner has switched and floating on number two on the wheel route. Again, I'm going to use the corners as the number one receiver so they can rotate quickly, and I'm going to use the safeties as the number two receiver. On this concept, the number two receiver ran a bubble right now, which told the corner to stick his foot in the ground, do his four-cone drill, and commit to the line of scrimmage. The outside linebacker will normally have the curl here to help us help the safeties out. The safety has checked that it was not a vertical. Foot in the ground arrives late to maybe on time on the slant. Safety is responsible for slanting the goes there. Outside linebackers got to help us out underneath. We rotate, run it back. Safeties are backpedaling for a read off number two. Once they get it, they're going to go over the fence that we used in our pedal train. First thing we're thinking is a go route from number one. Stay on top of it. Then we're going to think a post route. So we got to get out of our over the fence sprinting and correct our hips for a post. And then the last thing we're going to think is curl, where we would shut it down and drive downhill. So here we got a switch over the fence, and like always, we end with a high point. We're incorporating all the drills from beginning to end. Um, simple backpedaling, down 45, man and zone, all the way to a high point in each drill. From here, we're going to draw up what the other team does um, week to week and practice their scout book, be more specific on our what's and our why's. This is the stuff we do from summer through August and September, doing the how to's footwork and how to get faster at what we need to do. So I hope you learned something from it and uh, hope everything works right. And I'll see you guys next season.